our mom did so much to get this thing going with pizza, but was at everything. That was my friend Liz of Kairos Pizza. And it's your boy, I Drift, and you're listening to the What's Good Dough podcast. Whether it's dough, business, or life, my guests and I are always talking about ways we can level up. Today, you are going to hear from the most real person in the world, Liz. She is a mother. She'd been a stay-at-home mom for so long until she found pizza. And she's finding a way to make it happen, y'all. In this episode, we talk about her pizza education, how she got started her business in detail and what she's doing today. We also talk at the very end about balancing family life, which is so, so important to me at this very moment. You'll find out why if you don't know already. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. And remember to always ask, what's good, dough? What's up, everybody? I am joined today by the one and only Liz Schuler of Kairos Pizza. We're going to talk pizza. We're going to talk family. We're going to talk life. Thanks for being on the show today. How are you doing? Thanks, Idriff. I'm awesome. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much. There's one question that I love to ask. There's no right or wrong answer. What's good dough? Good dough is a meal that can be shared with people and community and family and friends or somebody that you just met. Um, Good dough is food together and connecting with other people. I love the whole connection part. Um, It reminds me of kind of why I started following you to begin with, uh, because, you know, you had this urge to connect with others and, and feed, right? I didn't really realize growing up that like having hospitality was a gift, like that not everybody has that. And so, um, and everybody's got their own strengths and stuff. And so for me to lean into, I love having people around and I love feeding people. And so that's one of the things that this kind of born from was the desire to feed people and um, have them have, have time together. You know, the desire to feed people is different um, based on who it's coming from, right? It's like I can feed people and invite people over and share a meal, or in your case, I can start a business and feed people that way. Yes. And it was so funny because the other day, my uh, Facebook memory where I had shared with my friends, like, this pizza thing is happening. And it came from, we couldn't have people over. So COVID hit and um, like 10 days later, our fifth daughter was born. And so we were like totally heightened. We're not going to have people over. Um, We didn't have grandparents meet her for a while. And so then I started cooking and baking and doing sourdough and started just giving it away. So yeah, it was definitely, I want to feed people. And then it became this whole other thing of pizza and a business and Kairos and it's just been awesome. Were you making pizza prior to the pandemic at all? Did you even like make any sort of dough before that or was it pandemic porn exclusively? We had a fundraiser a couple years ago that for um, a family that needed it and we made pizza. So it's just kind of funny that it's come back to that. Um, I would cook a lot. Like if you come over, we have rice and a rice cooker and chicken in a crock pot and it's tacos and um, pasta. We have friends that said like, if you come to the Schuler's house, do we ever eat anything but tacos? And for a while it wasn't because you can feed a huge group. Like you throw a bunch of chicken in a crock pot with taco seasoning and call it good. And so that was kind of our jam for a while. And then um, sourdough, everybody in our area was looking for yeast you couldn't find yeast and I never use yeast. I'm not a bread. I wasn't a bread baker. And so somebody posted about sourdough and I thought, well, our kids are home. This will be a fun experiment. Um, The kids did not care. They moved on very quickly from it, but it actually, it worked. And so then it was, okay, well we can make bread and we were feeding ourselves. And then what else could we do? And the internet said pizza. So did pizza, but now it's summertime and it's hot. And so my husband said, 
we should get a pizza oven. And I was like, no, we're not pizza oven people. Like, and I didn't even know anything about them. I didn't know how big they were. I didn't know if they were inside or outside. I knew nothing. But in my head, I was just like, no, we're not pizza oven people. Um, And so he likes to laugh at me because then like months later, I'm online and I've started following some people on Instagram and all of a sudden these people have pizza ovens. And so then I go back to him and I was like, hey, remember that oven that you were talking about? We should get one. (laughs) And he's like, remember when I had a discount and that's when I offered it to you? Oh, no. um, And we went back and forth. So then we got one. um, We got an uni and we had read some reviews. Like reviewers would get an uni and they'd cook like three pizzas and they'd write this review about this new oven. And I think within like a couple weeks, we were at like 75 or more because we got a lot of people in our house. So um, just to make pizza, I'm making like six to eight a night to feed everybody. And then we were giving them away. And so, yeah, it was, it was pandemic born for sure. Um, but I also think there was some desire for me to have something, something else. And so that had always been there. And then this is what came from it. What do you mean by something else? Like, what were you, what was it in addition to? I think for me, I'm a, I'm a full-time mom. I've been a mom for, um, almost 17 years and I have been primarily at home in that, during that time. And so, um, in the course of a day for me, we are high school, elementary school and babies. And so there's a lot in the course of a day for that. Um, now some people might think that I'm absolutely crazy to then add pizza to it. But, um, for me, it's, it's a place that's mine. It's a creative outlet. I've always been on the creative side. I was in all the art classes growing up in school. And so pizza has become a way for me to interact with other people, to build relationships, to get to know people at different places that I cook, and then also to put new stuff on a pizza to have, you know, would this taste good and try and figure it out and how can I make it look really pretty when I take a picture of it? What did you do to learn? The internet. Mm. I have watched a ton of videos of people stretching dough, like a crazy ton of videos of people stretching dough. Um, I started following people. Now I'm probably not following enough people, but I'm following good enough for me people that are awesome and post ingredients and post recipes. And um, I think a combination of like listening to some of your podcasts and listening to some of the things people have said online last week, I just reached out to people. And I asked some questions um, and I sent mainly women. I kind of just felt like, Hey, let's, let's talk to the other pizza women. And um, I sent some messages and said, Hey, what are you using for flour? Hey, what does this look like for you? Cause you're all sourdough. Um, and I, and they respond. And so um, definitely the internet and trial and error and figuring out that, what works in July when our humidity is, I want to say crazy high, but like we live in Michigan, so it's really not that high. Um, but what works in Michigan in July does not work in Michigan in January. Um, or the amount of time that it sits out. And out. Or So like when we did our first um, on-location event, I was using, um, I'm still using the like incredible bags that are for pizza delivery, but I'm putting dough in them to keep them cold. And the lady on the phone, when I talked to them one time, was like, oh, our bags are not designed for that. And I was like, oh, well, that's what they're getting used for. <laughs> like, well, that's great. But because um, I can fit like 75 dough balls into one of these giant bags because I'd pull out a tray. And by the time I was done cooking, like getting to the last pizza, there was times that that 10th, 12th pizza is like super warm. Cause it's 85 degrees outside. Um, and so, but what looks, that looks different in January. And so, so then looking online to figure out what that looks like. So yeah, I'd say I've, I've reached out to people. I've started listening to things, watching things. Um, and then also figured it out myself. Like 
I've gotten really good, not really good, but I'm trying at stretching dough literally in front of an uni because it is so cold outside that the dough is seizing up on me. And that's the only, like I'm needing the heat from the oven. Um, so a lot of trial and error, a lot of holes in my pizzas. That's part of it. <laughs> I'm still making holes today and you're, I'm not doing it in, in extreme weather like you. So good luck to you. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> After this winter, I was like, huh, I wonder what it would look like to just not do pizza for a couple of months next year. <sighs> I, I don't know how people can do it in the winter. Like, I think it was Farm Fired Pizza, who is now um, rebranded Brent. I think it's like something like Pizza Nerds. Anyway, he was just talking about how he had to not have service that day because the pipes froze. I was like, oh my gosh, my pipes don't freeze. It's never that cold here. But to have to like deal with that and make pizza doesn't sound fun. Going back to, you know, when you were out doing outreach uh, to other women, good for you for putting yourself out there, introducing yourself and getting the knowledge that you need. Was there any like surprising pieces of advice or comments, anything that they shared with you that was just like, well, it made you think twice or like impressed you or anything like that? No, I think people taking the time to talk to you is really cool to me. I struggle to not compare myself to other people. So like if I look at your business um, it seems like you've got it all together. You're working all the time. And the fact that you would take a minute to reach out to me is just awesome. Um, the realization is that like nobody has it all together. Um, and yes, people are working all the time. So like for real, taking the time to talk to me is awesome. Um, but also even though people have been doing this for 10, 15, 50 years, they all of them, they all at one point in time worked. Nobody just woke up one day and was like, I have 35 years of experience doing pizza. Um, everybody started somewhere. Um, and so I really appreciate the um, women and men who have just taken time. And it hasn't been a lot of long messages um, necessarily. Um, but I think um, Nick Bean in Texas, I think she's Texas, made a comment about like, um, as I was getting some new equipment, making sure that the um didn't like overextend myself like only getting the bare minimum and so um i was that was part of my plan originally but it was good to hear somebody else say like you don't have to have everything did you ever go to woodfired university i did go to woodfired university it took about that? three times <laughs> I was supposed to go last summer and we were on vacation and um, CJ at Woodfire University was awesome and was like, it's fine. Just come another time. And I was like, okay, great. We'll come in, I think September, maybe it was September. And then COVID was um, to a point in Denver where they were like, we can't do it this weekend. And so then um, we had a lot of life this fall. And then all of a sudden in January, I was like, oh, that's right. I've got tuition there and I've got plane credits I should call them <laughs> um and it turned out to be in February and man it is like drinking from a fire hose for that weekend they really? are they want to touch on so much um that they could spend the entire weekend on any one topic and you know like you could spend days simply bawling and stretching dough because you could um, but they also touch on catering setup and staffing and logistics and pricing out like your per pizza costs and, um, other, because they have like their big wood fired ovens, other things that you can cook in order to have a full spread at an event, you know? So when we were there, we did bacon wrap dates, um, that they like par baked in an oven and then finished off in like the big wood fired oven. Um, we had cannolis because we learned how to make ricotta and stretch our own mozzarella. And so it is jam packed. I think, I think what's the schedule Friday night you show up and we went to, um, Marco's, which is a wood fired in Denver pizza place and got to know everybody. And like, side note, super cool. I was feeling like, okay, I'm a girl going to this pizza thing. 
half the people were girls this year or that weekend that I was there. I don't know what it normally looks like, but it was multiple um, women. And a few of them were like husband and wife that the wife was the one starting the business and the husband was just there. And I thought that was so cool that the husband was there to like hear about it, but that wasn't who was doing it. Um, And then you have all day Saturday, all day Sunday, and then Monday you like set up to do an event and they feed the, like, I think it's University of Denver campus. So anybody from University of Denver can come over the hotel. We just cooked a lot. It was hundreds, probably. Wow. So but, did, yeah, that weekend, did service. Yeah. So that weekend, that was definitely, if, if there's something related to starting a mobile pizza business, they are going to touch on it that weekend. And if not, like we also got sent home with this like giant book that they've put together of information and access to online information. So yeah, it was, um, it was fun and tons of learning. Um, but yeah, definitely like they threw every topic. That's cool. And so you recommend it for every, for anyone who's looking to start their pizza business. Yeah, I think I would. Um, So I was able to go because um, they did tuition scholarships and Bianco DiNapoli um, was also in on the tuition and some travel. And then it worked out for me that I had family that I was able to stay with nearby in Denver. Um, I would definitely talk to them and see what are, what is your current experience and what are you looking for? I know that they have a couple different classes that cover a couple different topics. Um, and then the other thing I would say was I'm going there as somebody who already owns a different company's ovens. And so I kind of had a little bit of like, Ooh, are they just going to try and sell me their oven? Mm. And it really wasn't, there was no sort of like spend a ton of time on telling you why ours is better than what you have. Yes. And there was a lot of fire within oven owners who came to them learn how to use, use it. Um, but there was a number of other people with different ovens um, and I enjoyed that it wasn't like a three hour talk about theirs. It was on the business and we're going to teach you how to do it no matter what you have. But before we continue with the show, I want to introduce you to my two show sponsors, Uni Pizza Ovens and Cordo Olive Oil. Let's start with Uni. They are the number one pizza oven company in the world with the best community there is. Because of their ovens, I have made some of the most amazing pizzas. From round pies to squares, I'm able to get to temperatures of up to 900 degrees, allowing me to cook the pizzas of my dreams. If you're looking to grow your pizza business, buying an uni makes sense. My past guest Ryan of Sanctuary Pizza has a mobile catering company powered by uni. These powerful ovens are efficient, lightweight, and can be used almost anywhere. Whether you take pizza seriously like me or want to run a pizza operation like Ryan, uni is the choice for you. Use the link in the show notes and join the uni community. What does your business look like? So some navigating right now. Um, it's to go back in time. Um, I started with doing pickups from our house. I had called our um, health department to make sure that was okay. Um, I could not public, I could not publicly advertise. It could only be friends. Um, and we were good. So we started with pickups and then I figured out um, I could do the like events for people. So then we did some events and then um, we were sitting at one of our breweries. Our town is not that big, but we happen to have multiple um, microbreweries. And so we were talking and my husband said to the owner, like, what does it look like when you guys have a food truck here? And so she said, you know, talked about it and why. So then I scheduled to do it there. And then the health department was involved and got made sure I was doing everything okay. And so from that, I met another brewery owner. And so that relationship we've been at the most just in continuing on and having a regularity there. Um, I love private events. I love um, the ability to know what you're going into and to kind of have an idea of that. For me right now, it's a mix. I do not have enough people knowing me and booking me for private events. So I have like the brewery dates to fill in with that. Um, And it's again, 
I'm not trying to do pizza seven days a week. So for me to have next, like this month, we have multiple grad parties and then we have multiple dates at one of the breweries. Um, so that's our current model. Um, I know that like Ryan at Sanctuary Pizza that you talked to, like right now, I think he is like only private events. Like he's gotten so much business that he's not doing more than that. Um, I, I would love that. And then I also want to just be able to continue to have a spot for people to pick up pizza. I have a lot of relationships that when I say this is where I'm going to be, I see the same faces. And sometimes they don't even walk inside. Um, and somebody that you interviewed last year, I don't remember who, talked about like they knew they had something good when somebody pulled up to the brewery, got pizza, did not go inside, and then left. Um, and I was like, oh, that's really cool. And then that's happened <laughs> where there is, okay. <laughs> um, I list, like I podcast list in a lot in the grocery store. So I don't actually like, if I don't like then follow the person, I don't always remember who it was. Um, and so for me, I want to make sure that I still have a spot for that along with private events. So right now I don't, I don't, my schedule is open. I don't have enough bookings to not be able to do something. Um, but it's just kind of navigating what does that permanent place look like? So for us in our town, they're going to have a farmer's market on um, Thursday nights later in the summer. And so I'm excited to have a couple nights or a couple weeks a month that I will be there because then I can have my local people um, have a spot. Like they can know this month, twice a month, we can come and grab pizza from you then. So why is it important to have that permanent spot um, in turn? I guess maybe you, if you can answer it from a business point of view, but also a personal point of view. As a business, for me to know that I'm going to this private event and this is what I'm looking at is a better option. Uh, as a personal aspect, though, I love the relationships that I've built. I love the people who I've gotten to know because of pizza. And then I also love the people who are my friends who um, want to support me and love the food that I make. And so I, is it the best idea business wise? Probably not, but is it what I want so that the people <laughs> who No, know I me, think it is though. Um, and well, I, and think it is. Me, I don't, I need, I continue to need to be out and about because my schedule is not jam packed. I'm not saying no six months in advance. And so like we were last minute, had to switch an event, went to the one brewery that's in our town instead a couple weeks ago. And somebody was walking by, didn't even get pizza, but was asking me and I was like, oh, so like you could do this at someone's house. Oh, do you do Brad party? And so those are the, that's the business. Yeah. So that's good for business <laughs> stuff that I, was, I have to have. I was hoping to make that clear. Yeah. 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 Cause like I the know. way I see it, right. The way I see it is that like, you can market all you want on social media that, you know, unless you're running ads to your local area, it's hard for people to find you and know that you do catering and make yourself aware of your, or make people aware of your business. So by being out there in the community, having a place, a state, a uh, place where people can go, being out there in breweries and then people talking about you later on or people finding you in that way, that's how you get the, I guess, the, the private catering gigs are those, yeah, that's like, yeah. is that the goal? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think both. I really like both. And so for me, being at events that are crazy and there's a band playing or the one place we go does cornhole. So they have um, this like intense cornhole league um, on Thursdays. And so they'll walk around the corner and see that I'm there and I'll be like, oh, sweet, there's pizza tonight. Um, and I like, I like knowing that, like, I know who, what they're going to order. I know where they're going to be sitting. I know who can't do tomato sauce and that if his mom and dad are there that night, they can't either. Um, so I, I like that. Um, the first week we were there, I didn't do a margarita. Don't know why. Didn't do one. And then the bartender who had booked me was like, oh, I was really hoping <laughs> because I saw on your Instagram. <laughs> and so I was like, all right, from now on, Emily gets a margarita pizza. Um, and for me, like, I like to feed the bartenders without, like, 
I don't know what other food trucks do. I don't have them pay me. Like I get there and I want to feed them. Um, and they're happy. And then their food is sitting behind the bar. And when somebody asks them about it, they like, I always get good responses. And so I know who eats what. Um, so I, I love that and building relationships there. And then I also really love being in somebody's space and being trusted to feed their family, being trusted to execute something that they paid good money for. Um, and to, at the end of the night, feel like, yeah, that was the, that was the right decision was to have them come here. So business model wise, I think it's both for me for a lot of different reasons. Uh, the whole feeding the bartender is really smart, uh, because I went to a brewery, uh, probably last year and it was one of the breweries that I helped, uh, my buddy Tio's pizza. Uh, he and I did a slice out hunger event there, slice summer. And I think we had done our pizza there. And then I went to visit the brewery afterwards just to have a beer. And I was asking the bartender at the front and I was like, Hey, who are the, uh, who are the food vendors here that are, you know, must visit. And then they'll list people off. And like, if they've never tried your food, then they're not going to recommend you. If, uh, or if you're a jerk to those bartenders, <laughs> they're not going to recommend you. So. Yeah. And like, they prefer like, here's an adult beverage. Here's a pizza. This is where you can exchange food for food type items. Um, and when all of a sudden you're like out of singles, cause it happens, even when you show up and you're like, I brought way extra cash tonight, you still run out. Like I either, I either run out or nobody pays me in cash. It's just one extreme or the other. Um, and so then you go to your bartender and you sweetly smile and say, Hey, can you help me? Uh, earlier you mentioned, uh, that you were going back and forth uh, with the health, de health department. And maybe we can dig in a little bit about that, about how you kept hope and faith alive that you were finally going to get your permits. Because I think you had mentioned to me in, in, in a, a, offline that it was, was, it was kind of difficult. Um, I, w I don't know difficult so much as just time consuming. And, um, yeah. And so I, I went back and counted. I have, um, shoot, I emailed him again. So before a week ago, I had like 97 emails between a few health department people and I, um, and I will say this, there are probably some health departments that are a pain to work with, but mine and our County has been really great. Um, every time I called or emailed with a question, I got answers back. I got links sometimes when I was talking about equipment needs. Um, I could send them links before. So before I purchased certain things, I was shooting them like, hey, this is the fridge I want to get. Um, and he looked it up and he was like, oh, this is actually the Canadian rating of what we want. So yeah, you're fine. That works for me. Um, and so I think I was going to tell anybody like play ball. So just call them and say, this is what I want to do. How do I figure it out? And I know that it's totally different in all parts of the country. I know you mentioned one time on something about what the cost was for you. And it's totally different for me. Um, but I feel like when I called them originally, I said, hey, what can I do? And she said, here's what you can do. And then she sent me an email that included the three different types of licensing I could get to do this at a public place, like a brewery. Um, and one of those was temporary licenses. And she said, they are not the best decision financially long-term and they have some stipulations. So I could, once I apply for one, I can only use it at the same location for 14 days. You can't have so many in a row. There's rules. But she said, do this because then you might be able to decide if this is something you actually want to do. And so for me, yes. So the very first time I did on location, I had to apply with them. They had to come out the day that I started. Like my cheese was in a package. Nothing was open. I had to get it signed off on that I was ready to go. 
Um, but then I was good and I was able to get away with um, some differences. So like I could have everything in an ice chest where now I have to have it in a fridge. And I didn't have to have electricity, but now I have to um, for hand washing and other stuff. And so I'm really glad that I took that advice because it allowed me to do it, I think about four times last year. So I ended up cooking, I don't know, like a dozen, 12, 15 times within those licenses. Cause I try to like start it on a Thursday and use it like Thursday, Saturday, and the next Thursday. Like I tried to take advantage of the whole two weeks and it allowed me to see like, yes, I do want to do this. So then I went back to them and said, okay, now what are my next steps? What do I have to do to do this permanently? And then they responded, um, had to take a class, then had to apply back and work forth with paperwork. So our health department is very thorough. I've heard in the Metro Detroit area, like if you go with our county, um, they are going to make sure that you do everything how you're supposed to do it. Um, they're not going to be lax about anything, but they also want you to do things well. So they're going to set you up to do things well. I didn't, I didn't feel like I'm being fought with. Now, again, other counties and other states might be totally different, but. <laughs> yeah, right. Your mileage may vary, um, but I'm super impressed because, yeah, drastically. I mean, you hear horror, you hear of horror stories um, and it's like, t it takes forever to get permits or, uh, where I'm at and this and that, um, or it's expensive. Um, but what I like about your story is that they were willing and able to help and they gave some great suggestions that I think we have a similar thing. I want to say it's called a temporary food stall. Um, but I didn't even like click. It didn't even click for me to like look into that more. Um, just to, it's like a, you know, testing out your proof of concept. You don't want to dump all of your eggs in one basket and then, end up not liking it right for sure and we i'm hitting figuring out that different townships have different rules when it comes to the fire department it's the big push right now is that you're you have to be inspected by the fire department um but again there are some people on a facebook like michigan food truck group kind of upset about it and the one guy said like if you want to play ball play ball like if you want to do food in that town play by their rules figure it out and do the rules. And if it's not worth it, then just don't do business in that town. Um, for me, I want to do business in my town. So I got to figure it out. That's lovely. I mean, I guess when you're, when you're going from places and starting to cater, it's like, what is the workflow for you? Do you get like invitations for you to go to a different township and then you're off to check what their requirements are and then you respond to them? How, do, how does it work for you? So figuring all that out right now, um, some, some are really, some townships and towns are really like clear on what their rules are. Um, for ours, I, we live in the village and so the village I'm fine, but once I go into the township, it changes. So I, um, am in the process of getting our township license, like mobile food license. Um, but if I'm at a private event, I don't have to apply for an extra permit or something because I'm not like peddling my wares, I guess. Like I'm not soliciting business out at a fair kind of thing. So they, you don't have to have a different um, permit for that. Um, so yeah, it is kind of navigating what that looks like to figure out. For me so far, I haven't had too many outside of our area that I need to then go figure out, but it is like, yeah, I might say no to you. Mm -hmm. And I might, and I might say no to you. And if you don't like that, then you might want to go tell your township that their rule is too much. That's, yeah, that is hard. Um, in terms of the, uh, catering, do you just have one license for that? And are, are you required to like have a commissary? Um, what are the rules so for that for you? So I am considered in the state of Michigan, a mobile food unit and I can do a, a public event. I can do a private event that covers me with that. Um, I 
because it's pizza and it's dough. Um, I know some people have fully enclosed trailers and they figure that out. I don't. Um, I have a coffee shop in our town that I use fridge and countertop space to mix dough and then store it in there and put cheese and other stuff. Um, it's not huge, so I can't like fill the whole place because they have a business to run. And that was one of the other um, health department requirements. They want to make sure that you don't hinder that business and that business doesn't hinder you. So they had to come in and check that out. So for me, um, I have all of anything that I want to do prep wise ahead of time, I'll do there. But then um, I can also do food prep on my app at like at a location. And so I am a tent unit um, and we have a pop up 10 by 10 tent and we can be sustained completely in that or we're next to our trailer and the trailer is just big enough to house a refrigerator and everything else that I need. Um, it's probably a little bit bigger than it needs to be, but that allows me to walk around in it. So that is a benefit then <laughs> because for a while it was, everything was into my car and out of my car. And it, so taking out every car seat, taking out the back seats, putting in a tent, and then you're done with an event and you have an uni that is really hot. And um, so I got really good at like wrapping an uni with a quilt and carrying it into my car. Um, it's a little bit more classy. It's a little bit more classy now when it's like on a cart and you just roll it away and put it in a trailer and not have to. That's good. Um, like uh, that one pop up that I was telling you about with Tio's Pizza, we didn't have a cart. And I was like, oh, crap. This is like, this is a lot of work. And you don't, you do not realize how heavy those are until they're hot. Yo, yeah, we had like, it was literally the last thing we put away and it was still way too hot. And we were just like, okay, one at a time, just be quick and hurry up. <laughs> Let's go. Um, uh -huh. But yeah, good call. And, and another thing for those listening who are considering doing a, the mobile food setup is that you're, you're touching things twice. I mean, four times, two to four times, right? Um, loading it into the car, um, loading it out of the car, loading it back into the car and then loading it out of the car. Is that and where, kind of the same for you? Uh -huh. And where is it going? And is it taking up your garage? And can you not park in the garage now because you're doing that? Um, I like to think um, grocery shopping. Like once you, if you want to buy something at the grocery store, you have to like take it and you put it in your cart and then you get it out of your cart to pay for it. And then you put it in a bag and then you put it back in your cart and then you put it in your car and then you go home with it. And so when they invented, I don't know if you guys have at your grocery stores where you're like, you can scan it the whole time you shop. Um, oh, that's no, my, that's tight. oh, it's fantastic. So you pull out your phone and you just scan all the barcodes and you bag it all into your, like you put bags in the cart. And so then you never have to touch the items again. And you just walk out of the store. They have it's glorious. That. Yes. What? I know. I, I know they have like those Amazon, like convenience stores where you literally just walk in and grab what you want and leave. But that's clearly like Amazon, but you know, they have the technology to do that. But my luckies, I got to go deal with a clerk or something like that. And yeah, you got to wait in line. I didn't know nope. you, they had that. Welcome to the Midwest. <laughs> well, I mean, ugh, well, that's tight. They need to bring that over to Cali. I <laughs> feel, like, um, feel like you guys are normally ahead of us. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so I guess where are you are you paying for extra storage then or do you have to store your ovens anywhere how does that work so my trailer is currently in my driveway but it has an official home at a storage unit um real close to our house um that just has like you know a big lot that are like roped off for where people can put rvs and cars and other things that they need to store places um, luckily for me, that is literally less than a mile away. So that time is a lot more convenient. Um, I was back and forth reading through like the paperwork in our village of whether or not you could have it on your property. Um, I leaned more towards let's have a spot for it just because then it's not blocking anything on my property. Um, and that way, like it's been living at our, on our driveway a while just so that I can do work. Um, but then it can go away and when the summer is hot, I can pull my car into the garage and it won't be on fire. 
um, when I try to leave and then like in the snow in the winter. So for us, I think it really probably depends on what your house like setup looks like. I know a lot of people keep trailers and food trucks on their property. Um, for me, it worked out to have a storage unit nearby that I can just go back it into and leave it there and go pick it up when I need to. Are you allowed to just park up anywhere? Like at, um, assuming you don't need permission from like the, like the grocery store, uh, plaza, are you allowed to just like pull up to any sidewalk and sell? I'm not sure. And I haven't tried that. <laughs> um, I do know. Um, so like neighborhoods, I've got a neighborhood that we're chatting with to do where I'll be at like by one of their parks and people can sign up to get food ahead of time. Um, that one, it will be kind of associated with a residence. So again, it will be like kind of a private event, but also open to their whole neighborhood. Um, I haven't tried to do any of the like, just park in the back of a grocery store parking lot. I don't like, and I know some food trucks have, there's a food truck that just today was at um, like a plant nursery kind of store um, that they made an arrangement with that he was doing, but I haven't, haven't tried it yet. So I don't know that that's a thing I will try. My second show sponsor is Cordo Olive Oil. At first, I didn't believe that olive oil mattered. It wasn't until I got educated and learned about the difference between commodity oil and Cordo's fresh squeezed olive oil that I ditched the supermarket stuff. Today, I only use Cordo olive oil when it comes to making my dough and even doing a post-baked drizzle. Mm. I have even made some amazing pesto with it. Oh my goodness. Cordo's high quality olive oil does really elevate anything it touches. My buddy Chris, who runs a slice of New Jersey, just switched over to Cordo. Not only is he getting quality, but he ended up saving money by switching over too. If you're still unsure of the difference, pizza operators can sign up for a free olive oil tasting. Use the link in the show notes to learn more. Thank you for taking the time to listen to my show sponsors and supporting this show. You said you mentioned you, you had a big family. How many how many kids do you have? So we have five kids. Our oldest is a high schooler. We have two um, in fourth grade and fifth grade, and then two, um, one's almost preschool, so a three-year-old and a two-year-old. So Busy house, full house. It is, and baseball season just started. So it's navigating. Um, and so we have two that play baseball, one that is in drama. Um, and then the other two just have to come with everybody. Um, and so it's saying yes to certain pizza events and it's saying no to others. Um, I had to tell somebody, no, I've got baseball. And maybe it's not the best business decision for me to not do an event because a kid's playing a game. But for me as a mom, it's the better family decision. And I'd rather... I want my kids to look at this time and say, our mom did so much to get this thing going with pizza, but was at everything. And if she wasn't, dad was there. Um, and that that's what they remember, that it wasn't mom just always gone, but it was a balance of both. I think that's super important. And it's given me something to think about because like, I don't know if you're aware, but my wife is pregnant. I know, and I'm excited for you guys. <laughs> Thank you. It is our first one, and, you know, I have a full-time job, and then I do what's good dough, whatever that encompasses, right? Whether it's making pizza or doing podcasts or editing. Um, but I, too, have, you know, a very – I want to be there for my kid mm -hmm. or kids, and so it's like now I'm I'm trying to figure out how much time do I put in what, how do I prioritize, and maybe maybe you can help me or you can help other business owners out there kind of figure it out too. So last fall when we really decided, and I say we, my husband jokes, he's like, Liz is all pizza, that's her, I taste test it, this is her business. Um, but there is a ton of support when it comes to my husband and my kids from the big siblings watching the little siblings for a little bit while I do something to my husband, always trying to come down to public events just to grab pizza and say hi. He came the other week and we were sold out and he pulled up and I was like, so I can't beat you. 
<laughs> it's like, thanks. Uh, thanks for coming. Can't feed you. Um, but so we had been talking about what we wanted to do and have a fundraiser. And the plan was in the fall. And then on November 30th, our our daughter's high school, the only high school in our town, had a 15-year-old open fire. And he um, killed four of our students and wounded seven other students and a teacher. And so, um, I mean, my life went into mom mode uh, right away. And then I think maybe a week or two after, I looked at my husband and I said, we can't have a party right now. This, this isn't the time for pizza. So pizza, I had already scheduled an event at one of the breweries to do their Christmas thing. Um, my high school daughter is who helps me at all of our events. And she she wasn't coming. And I said, that's fine. It's a band. It's loud. And so we did that event and then kind of stopped, made our way through Christmas and January and I I knew it was still needing to happen, but it was really hard to even get the motivation to send an email, to send a what's next. And so I think it probably was around the end of January, the start of February, when I finally said, no, this this is what needs to happen right now. Um, and so our our town and our family are still grieving and we're navigating what this all looks like. Um, and so with our fundraiser party the day before, I thought like, should I be having a party tomorrow? (laughs) Is this, is this okay? And a friend of mine said, yes, like we get to have good stuff and we can still be grieving and we can still be sad, but we can have good in that. And so I think that added to why the event felt so sweet to me was to have just some joy um, in a season that's been really hard. Um, and so, yeah, it, it was pizza for me has always been m- not before my family. And after the fall, it just solidified my, it needs to sit on the back burner for a minute and I need to be at home with our family and figure out what what we need before we move on to pizza. Well, first of all, thank you for sharing that with me. And I'm so sorry for the traumatic experience that your town has been through, but more specifically like your daughter who was there. Um, That's crazy. I I mean, I read about it when you told me about it and it's like, I read one news article that like, I was scared that it was going to haunt me on my, in my, in my dreams. Like literally it was I couldn't imagine that happening here. And I think you made the right call in, in postponing it. Um, but I love what your, was it your friend who said that, like, we're allowed to have good things? Yeah. yeah. So we're, we're navigating it. And it's like, our kids are at prom right now. And I hope they're having a blast. And they're having graduations and graduation parties that I get to make food for. (laughs) And so um, I hope that they can all see good moments as they move forward. And um, my heart hurts because that's not the case for the four families who don't get to do moments with their kids now. Um, But yeah, it we're, we're navigating and figuring it out. Yeah. I mean, the fact that you're able to share these moments with your daughter and your kids, it's like it's something to be grateful for, right? We, we got to learn to cherish those small moments while we have them because mm-hmm. you never know. For it's sure. so crazy. I'm hopeful and I love that, like, I get to hang out with my kid. She does all of my ordering. She runs around like a mad woman delivering pizza to people. And she's great. And then she got another job at a coffee shop. And I think that they're trying to steal her from me, but it's okay. Um, And so, like, I thought the other day, how cool is it that I get to spend all this extra time with my 16-year-old because she works for me. And she, like, she's going to have to start stretching dough and cooking pizzas because we need other people doing that besides me. But that's... She knows that's coming. That's in the next couple of weeks. And she's like, okay, I'll figure it out. 
Hey, hey, Pizza Pal. I just want to say thank you for listening to the show so far, and thank you for making it all the way here. Before we get on to the end of the show, I want to remind you all to please leave a rating on the podcast. You could do it right now. Uh, Just go ahead and click five stars if you're listening on Spotify or Apple. It will greatly help the show. I appreciate you so much. And if you're looking to buy an uni or a second uni, the affiliate link helps the show so, so much. So please use that anytime you're considering a new oven. All right. Enjoy the rest of the show. Oh, I, I remember. How was your fundraiser? It was awesome. Uh, you were advertising. You had it. You rented out a brewery, right? Tell me about like why you chose to do it that way and, and what the result was. We made the website and had tickets for sale on it just straight through me. Um, and the brewery that we, one of the two that we've been at, has a really big, in, it's the production facility. So they make like, I would say, I have no idea. They make tons and tons of cans of beer and they distribute them in kegs all over. Um, and so they have parties in there. And I had said to them like, hey, can I throw a fundraiser party? And she said, yeah, of course. And so we talked what the logistics would be for that. And we were back and forth. We picked a date. Um, it happened to be... So like, I think May 3rd was our first pizza pickup. And so then our party was April 30th. So it was kind of a sweet one year. We called it the launch party, but it also was like the anniversary party. And tickets got you a pizza. There was a band and then it also had a beer ticket for the night. And so if you wanted to do more than that beer wise, that was on you. But then at the end of the night, I could pay just for that bill. Uh, the band is actually one of the worship teams at our church, plays at bars, and they are awesome. And so when I called or messaged them and said, hey, you're my first choice, and they were available, that was perfect. And that was our party. And then I started saying, like, let's do some raffles and door prizes. Door prizes I ended up purchasing and getting donations. I made it like Liz's favorite things. So there was, like, gummy bears and some of our favorite, my favorite beers and Ghirardelli chocolate, you know, the random stuff. That's just fun. And then door prizes came from, um, like three different breweries, bunch of coffee shops, um, different stores in our town, gift certificates, items. And I tried to ask the places that I do business with already, like, Hey, we're having this party could you do something for that? And then I also posted, there's a group for the businesses in our town. Um, and a couple people responded to that. So it was a blast. It was definitely a moment of me having to say like, these are people who support me. Um, and this is awesome. These are people who came out, who bought raffle tickets, knowing that, you know, a raffle ticket is really a donation with the chance at a prize. And, who were buying extra tickets for other people to come with them, buying extra pizzas that night and having people drive far distances. I had a friend from the other side of the state come in. I had a friend who was going to come from Colorado, but then had work issues, but just it was a night to know what I'm doing is supported. And it was really cool. Financially, uh, it helped with our fridge and my prep tables and some other expenses. Um, And so that was really sweet to be like, thank you guys. You paid for this. (laughs) Um, And it was really, it was really sweet for me just to have a moment to see, to see and feel loved. Uh, And I think I do. I like, that's not something I question, but it was really, it was really nice. And to see different people that know each other sitting together that didn't come together and having conversations. And again, like that's for me, that's my jam for people to be eating food. And at one, I think my mother-in-law and my sister-in-law and her husband, and they had friends. And then my mother-in-law had friends. And then another friend of mine, like are all at this table together, just having big conversations for the night. And so that was really, really sweet to see happening. 
That sounds like a dope event. Uh, I mean, one thing that you said is like, oh, I, I feel loved and we all need more of those moments in our lives to just be able to see that even though we know it, it's like to visually see that in front of you happening and feel it in that very moment, how powerful it is. Sounds cool. Cool. Well, I want to ask you my two final questions before we wrap up. Um, what is one mistake in pizza business or life that people can avoid? I think in a life sense, it is when someone says something good to you, dismissing it quickly. And I think that there is a um, line between like humility, but and like bragging, but also just knowing that you're good at something or that somebody complimented you and that's okay. Like that's a good thing. And so for me, I have to work really hard when someone says something good to not dismiss it before I hear it and I receive it and to say, yeah, they did really like that. I have a hard time with that too. Cause then sometimes I'm thinking like, are they just saying it to be nice? How genuine is it? You know, or is it just like, but maybe it's because I have a hard time taking the compliments. So thank you for that. What do you want to leave the audience with today? So um, Kairos Pizza came, my husband has named all of our babies. And so all of their names were picked by him. And Kairos was actually named by him too. Um, I was going back and forth on a lot of things. And he was like, it's Kairos. Of course it is. And so Kairos is Greek. Um, and it says it's God's right timing. And um, I think that there are so many reasons that this isn't the right time to do this for me. Um, I could make a, I could make a list, um, but it, it feels right. And it feels like every step, um, even when there's been hiccups or roadblocks, it's come together afterwards and I continue to feel like this is the right time for it. And so it seems silly cause like it's the right time for pizzas or line. Um, but if, if you are trying something and it, and it feels like the right time, just keep going for it. And even though like for me, we had a lot going on. And I had people ask like, oh, are you opening up a brick and mortar? And I thought, no, like I can't, I can't mom and do that right now. And there are some people who do, but that's not where I'm at right now. Um, but I guess I would say if I was to leave somebody would be if it's feeling like this is what you're supposed to do right now, just try it, go for it, see what happens. Um, and be willing to say like, oh, that was a big mistake or like, oh, that was awesome. And I'm going to see what the next step is afterwards. Liz, thank you. Thank you so, so much for being an inspiration to me and others listening. And most importantly, your family. I wish you all the success in your pizza journey. To you, the listener, heck yeah. Please go find my friend Liz on Instagram at Kairos underscore underscore pizza. It will be linked in the show notes so you have access to it directly click that link and go follow her and let her know what's good though. I appreciate you for listening. If you have any feedback on the show, you can DM me on Instagram at what's good though. And last but not least, please share this episode with a fellow pizza lover, someone who you think should hear it. I appreciate you. I love you. Till next time. Peace.